Probably my favourite brushes in Illustrator are the art brushes indicated by this little symbol here. Now, if you want to follow along, select the brush tool and make sure you're in Art Brush Superhero Start. And you'll see I've placed in here a rough sketch that we're going to trace. So I've got the head and the body. And we're going to select the line work layer. Now, you need to have an active layer to paint on, so make sure you've got the line work layer selected. Now, if you're not already in the painting workspace, you can choose a painting workspace, which will open up your brushes. And I've just double clicked on the swatches, colour and colour guide to collapse those uh, palettes. Now, we could choose a charcoal brush, say, to create some artwork. And if I paint with my brush, it creates a charcoal based artwork, as you would expect. Now, if I select that, Notice that it's just a path with some artwork on it. And if I double click this to go into my art brush options, I can adjust the size. So I can go in and say, well, keep it a fixed size, but just adjust it up to be a little higher. And if I click on preview, I can see that changing over time. Now I can also have pressure sensitivity control the brush, but we're just gonna leave it fixed, but increase the size. Now, if I click okay, and say apply to strokes, that's going to apply it to my stroke. And if I select the direct selection tool now and select this stroke, I can move it around, move the points around. And you'll notice that it adjusts the artwork on the path accordingly. So it does its best to wrap it around the path. Now it's important to note that that is just a path. If we go to outline mode, so if I go to view outline, all I'm seeing is an outline and then Illustrator has applied artwork to that. So let's go back and choose preview view again. Now, if I double click again to open up my brush options, we can decide how the brush scales. Does it scale proportionately? Does it stretch to fit the stroke length or do we stretch it between guides? If you stretch proportionately, when you adjust the size, it's going to adjust it in all dimensions. You quite often end up with something like this. It's just not practical. So the default is to stretch it along the path. But you may not want to distort your artwork like that. So there's also a new option for stretch between guides. And what you can do with this is you can say, OK, I only want to stretch it between here and here. I want the end to remain constant. And that way it only stretches the middle. And that becomes really useful when you work with artwork that's less organic. And we'll have a look at that a little bit later. So there's lots of options in here. You can also reverse the direction, change the direction of the path. And you'll notice that if I have preview on, I can see that updating as I make changes. You can also ask it to be colorized. And that means if I choose a different color, it would show up on the path. You can also flip it. So if we want it going the opposite direction, we can flip it across or flip it along. And there's also overlap options in there. So. And this is a brush that's been created for us, but what we're going to do to have a look at these options a bit more is actually create our own artwork. So I'm going to say leave strokes and it's going to go back to the default settings and we're going to get rid of that stroke. So I'm just going to select it and hit backspace a couple of times to delete it. Now, what I want to do here is we've already seen how easy it is to draw regular lines. So I'm not going to bother showing you how to create just a basic artwork line. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create an art brush that we can use to paint the hair. Now, if I was to, first of all, select the ellipse tool just to show you how this works. If I click and draw an ellipse, OK, and I want to reverse the fill in stroke. So I'm going to hit shift X to do that. So it will fill my ellipse with black and have no stroke. And then go up here to the art brush menu and say new brush. So that's in the wing menu of the brushes panel. New brush. And I'm going to say create an art brush from my artwork. And I'm going to click OK. And it now brings up my dialog box. So I'm going to call this variable width round end. So I like to create my own brushes for inking artwork and the variable width stroke up here is OK, but you can't apply that to all brushes. And the other thing is it has sharp ends and I quite like having a slightly round end. So this is how you create a brush. So we're going to create a basic round ended variable width brush and I'll click OK. 
And then we can get rid of the artwork, so just backspace to delete it. And with that selected, my variable width round end, I can select my brush tool and start to paint. And basically, it's stretching that across my artwork. So I've got this lovely weight of brush. And again, I can go into the settings if I want to and just adjust it so that it uses pressure sensitivity as well. So maybe it goes between 44% and say 190%, slightly different from the calligraphic brush, you set a range between sizes here. And when I click OK and say leave strokes as they are, and now paint a new stroke using my brush tool, I can use a combination of pressure sensitivity and that variable width. So that's how you create art brushes, okay? So what we're going to do now is create something a little bit more interesting. What I'm going to do is select my pencil tool and just scribble. So I'm just going to create a little scribble. And let's do another one that's a bit tighter. So put the lines tighter together. And one more. And you can hear me scribbling away on my tablet there. So we've created some artwork. We're going to select one of those. I like this one the best. And I'm going to go to new brush again in my brushes panel art brush and I'm going to click OK. So this is now my new brush. I'm going to leave the settings as they are and click OK. And then I'm going to delete these. I might keep these two because I might use them. So let's just keep them to the side. Now what I'm going to do is start to paint. So I'll select my brush tool. Now I've called it art brush one. I should really call it hair brush. So let's type in hair. So we'll call it hairbrush one. Now I've accidentally had that selected when I did that. So let's just delete that and get rid of it. But if I select my brush tool now, I can go up to the hair and start painting these multiple lines. Okay. With the default setting as it is, it's going to stretch to fit stroke length. But in this case, scale proportionately works quite well. And if I also make it pressure sensitive, so do it from about 50% to about 150%. And now brush with that, you can see I can create these really lovely feathery hair strokes by creating my own artwork brush. So that's a little bit about how you can create these artwork brushes. The only other thing that I want to show you is how to scale with guides, which we'll have a look at in a second. But for now, just have a practice with that. And once you've had a practice, you can stop the movie playing back and then come back and have a look at the second part where we'll have a look at how to control how the brush scales. OK, so I'm guessing you've had a little practice while I've been practicing as well and you're probably enjoying it quite a bit. I get really carried away with drawing with these lovely art brushes. OK, so I suppose I better stop and show you something else. You can actually switch off that layer and have a look at this layer where I've done a little bit of a better job. Nobody was watching me on that one, so I kind of prefer that one. So let's switch on this layer and just delete the artwork from there. And then what I'm going to do is show you another little trick with art brushes. Now, if I open up this file here, this is my brush practice pad. And in here, I've got a whole load of brushes that you can play around with. For now, what I want you to do is go down and select the arrow brush and then select the brush tool if you haven't already selected it. And it's a red arrow. And if I paint with that, you'll notice what it does. It paints this lovely red arrow in whichever direction I drag. Now, the only thing is, if I draw a short one, it squashes the tip. And if I draw a long one, it stretches the tip. And if I was to draw something like that, we're going to end up with it all distorted as well and curled around. So what I can do is I can open up my brush options and stretch it between the guides. Remember I said I was going to show you how to do that earlier. So basically I say, okay, I'm happy to stretch it between here and here, but not on the actual arrowhead of the brush. And now we get these lovely stretchy tails, but the arrowhead remains the same. So I'm going to click OK, let's say apply to strokes, and that will apply the changes. And now if I paint, I can paint these lovely long twirly shapes but still maintain the same size of my arrowhead. Similarly, if we select those and choose the paintbrush, we get the same problem. Notice how on this one, the stroke is really curled. If I open up my paintbrush options, and again, we just put some guides in, 
and say, I only want to stretch the wood, I don't want to stretch the tip, you'll see that now the tip remains the same if I apply it to the strokes and then just delete that and now paint some new ones. We should get the same length of tip, but the wooden part of the brush is stretching. So great fun playing around with these different brush types. So have a little play in my brush practice pad. <laughs>